Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland But the reason I pronounce my surname like that is because some people say don't you mean Newland they actually correct me I find out the doctor's surgery and they say what's your name I said Jason Newland and they say oh Jason Newland no they don't say it they say Jason Newland Jason Newland and I don't correct them again but isn't that bit rude to correct somebody on their own spelling or their own pronunciation of their own name. Anyway, so I'm Jason Newland and the reason I've pronounced it like that since 2006 was that people knew how to spell it so they knew what to look for when they googled me or looked for my website. So instead of looking for someone who spelt N-E-W-L-E-U-N-D, I pronounce it how it's spelt, New Land. You know, I think this is probably one of the best introductions I've ever had. I'm very, very pleased with it. <laughs> no, I'm not really. Um, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And only listen to this incredibly boring session when you can safely close your eyes. So if, if you're driving a tank or you're at the top of a crane operating that then maybe don't listen to this during that or if you're maybe you're a politician and you're in the house of parliament in England maybe you're on the second row you're just behind the Prime Minister and you've got some little headphones in and you decided that maybe you know even though you have to be there you know you're supposed to show your face pretend to be interested, you know, all that stuff because you're getting paid uh, a nice little chunk of cash every year. Doesn't mean you have to maybe listen to what everyone's saying because chances are you've already got the script of what's going to be said anyway. Maybe you already know what the Prime Minister or the uh, opposite person is going to be saying and the questions are going to be asked and you know what the topic's going to be and it's the same old you know same old stuff really so you decided to listen to some music then don't listen to this because I think it looks quite it doesn't look great when the person's sitting behind the Prime Minister when she's talking, so she's standing up. At the moment we've got a Prime Minister called um, Zelda, not Zelda, uh, Theresa May, and she's, you know, if you're sitting behind her when she's talking, it means that you're going to be on camera. And if you're sort of leaning over, dribbling, and you're like snoring away and you know, it's not the best look because I don't know if the Prime Minister does this but I know that if I was the Prime Minister or if I was on television I would be watching back I'd be
happy watching myself to see how I did and to see how I came across or if I looked okay if I you know if I the speech was understandable make sure that I pronounce my name correctly you know those kind of things and if I saw one of my cabinet you know one of my politicians that I am in charge of laying down in a in a little made up bed in a sleeping bag or something while I was talking to the nation I'm not sure that we would send a a feeling of happy flutters to me, inside me. So yes, yeah, so if you're if you are listening and you're sitting in the House of Commons or the House of Lords even or somewhere then maybe don't listen to this. I'm not saying that anyone would be listening to this whilst being on live television. But it's not the point, it's not really, it's not, not a, that's a good thing about these things, is they're not discussions. It's just me talking at you. Oh, it's my favorite, favorite type of conversation. There's no interruptions. The only, I guess the only interruption really would be if Andre decided to have a, I don't know, do something particularly loud, which it sometimes does, but it shouldn't really interrupt the swing of things as far as the recording, you know, goes. Although. I suppose I should apologise for, well, I'm not going to, but I should mention that um, my last recording, I caught myself off guard and I, I found something that I said quite funny. And I laughed and it was a little bit louder than the rest of the recording. So I, I try not to do that stuff, but it's, it just caught me, I caught myself off guard and I'm not saying that these sessions are like walking a tightrope and you know I accidentally looked down and you know that, that caused a bit of a wobble it wasn't really like that at all, I don't know why I'm even mentioning tightropes or walk in them. Never saw the point in that. Never really. Because I used to try when I was young. Everything happened when I was younger, didn't it? Even my last bowel movement was when I was younger. But I had, because I had three brothers. I grew up with three brothers. And so we all, two were older, one was a lot younger, he was eight years younger than me. And so we, I was kind of the experiment for the older ones, so they get me to do things, you know, um, test stuff out. So, you know, if there was a, if there was a bee on the ground and they weren't sure whether or not it's safe to pick it up, yeah, they're getting me to pick it up, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's an exaggeration, but it did happen once. So it's not really an exaggeration, is it? But it happened. But to be fair, it wasn't really a tester because this happened in Newcastle when I was really little. And I used to live in this block of flats. It was a big council estate. And... 
there was a bee on the floor and I think it was it passed away so I just I have no interest in bees I used to eat daddy long necks but I was very young I didn't you know I was hungry and the I think my brother one of my brothers and his friends thought it'd be funny if I picked the bee up and I said no I'm not going to pick the bee up because it will sting me and they said no it won't it won't sting yeah and I picked it up and it stung me and I can honestly say you know what I learned that day I didn't learn anything I really didn't learn anything it was it wasn't one of those situations where I could generalize a learning that could just, you know, fold out like a big carpet leading into the future. Maybe colored like the back of a bee. There was no, nothing like that, just, just an event. it hurt it was very stingy and then I ate it because I was hungry so these recordings really are just me talking about nothing and there is a method to what I'm doing. I know it might not seem particularly obvious why I'm saying the things I'm saying and some of it isn't of any obviousness or even maybe no purpose to some of it. But the overall thing, if you think of what this a bit like a painting. See, a painting in itself is just the painting. Someone's painted something and there's, you know, a degree of meaninglessness behind it other than for the person that's painted it. They've maybe enjoy themselves or maybe able to express themselves emotionally able to you know got something out of it but then that painting turns into something else if it becomes publicly seen It becomes whatever the responses are that it gets from people. And some people would get, they'd see something and feel something inside and maybe connect on a really deep level with that painting. So it's not about the painting as much as it's about the feeling that is in response to that visual stimuli. Maybe it's a way to get that response, to get those emotional feelings up to the surface to maybe release certain thoughts and feelings that were maybe felt a bit stuck in the past but now can just travel up to the surface I suppose a bit like unfreezing the water when a 
lake is frozen. Nothing can get to the surface, but once the ice melts, everything has free access to the surface. You can get up to the top of the water. So it's a bit like that, it's a, the ability to relieve and to release. I think sometimes with things like psychotherapy and counseling and those kind of things, where it's about, you know, talking therapies, where it's about just discussing how you feel, discussing the thoughts and feelings within you. It can be quite nice to just air that. It's a bit, I know the word is cathartic, but it can really be a nice, feeling where it's no longer being held inside that ice is melted so we can get to the top of that water and start breathing the oxygen again or making a little bubble to breathe oxygen from thinking of frogs now, I don't know why. It's kind of that freedom of, when I say frogs I don't mean Kermit, I mean actual reptilian frogs. As it turn from tadpoles into frogs, I kind of feel maybe that That's what we're doing all the time. And by that I don't mean that we're turning into frogs. But there's an, any, an energy change. I'm gonna try and say that word one more time. An energy change. Where something, a thought, a feeling, an idea transforms into something new. And I know that sometimes that can be a real surprise for people when they have a new experience, when they were expecting more of the same. It's like maybe you're listening to this and you're feeling differently about this session or maybe you've listened to previous recordings from the past and for some reason there's a change occurring within you and you don't even know why but you can feel a sense of I don't want to use the word pleasure but it might be pleasant feeling of serenity we all have access to that feeling you know I sometimes think that some of the more unpleasant feelings that we may have during our lives are really hard work. I've actually seen people having arguments 
where one person has said something to the other person in the heat of the argument and the other person started laughing because it was funny and they had to work really hard to get back to feeling you know angry or bitter or whatever the argumentative you know whatever the emotions were in order to continue with the argument so it took work a lot of energy to do that it's like trying to tie two pigs tails together really difficult I mean I've never done it I'm just telling you that now it's just neither of the pigs want to have their tails touched really they don't want to be held in one place they want to do their own thing but then you've got two and neither of them want to be tied to the other one And that's an analogy you're probably not going to get anywhere else. You know that domestic arguments very much like trying to tie two pigs' tails together. No, you're probably not going to hear that anywhere else. You're welcome to to use it if you like. Just remember to mention me, do a little disclaimer. <laughs> I'm gonna say that at the end, just by the way, that that little analogy was from this person who makes recordings online and nobody knows why he does it. But he still keeps doing it. Still keeps plugging along and hoping that one day somebody will listen to him. Well actually, people do listen. You're listening. I do want to thank you. I do. I don't think you realise how important you listening to these recordings are to me. It gives me a sense of purpose, a feeling that my life is worthwhile and I'm in some small way helping people like you I hope hopefully I really do hope that at the very very least these you know my recordings can help you to relax and to calm down a bit and to focus away from those things that maybe you were thinking about previously to your decision to listen to my voice and to let your body and your mind naturally relax and your mind calms calms down and the more you listen to me the quicker you feel relaxed I don't say that in the sense of it's a race because it's not there is no time limit you're not being timed it's not a competition and it's not about going from a hundred to zero 
It's about feeling however you feel. And maybe being aware of the feelings. A little bit more aware than maybe you were before. And to me that's that's a useful thing to have. It's a useful situation to be in. Because speaking from my, I can only speak from myself. I've had issues with anxiety, stress and stuff like that pretty much my whole life. And I've learned ways to calm down, ways to relax. And it's probably, it's probably one of the, the best things I've done for myself. There's plenty of other things I could have done and perhaps would like to do, maybe will never do, that will be a benefit to my, you know, for my own well-being. But, you know, time will, well, time will show for that one, time will tell. I'm always looking at other possibilities and new ways to maybe look after myself to improve my health but without being too self-indulgent mind you these recordings are very self-indulgent but I don't mind that so Being able to relax whilst listening to some English man talking about whatever he talks about, I'm talking about me here, is just one of many ways you can relax and the more you listen to me the easier you'll find that you can just let go and even though the title of these sessions are let me bore you to sleep Sleeping does require relaxation. You know, whenever I wake up in the morning, or depending on what time I've gone to bed, but apart from maybe needing to go to the toilet, my body is usually really relaxed. I do wonder if only I had that level of relaxation at the beginning of the sleep, you know, as soon as I put my head on the pillow and lay my body on the bed, I mean this, this all kind of happens at the same time, I don't put my head on the pillow and then walk over to the bed, you know, walk, pull the curtains and come back. You know, it's, it was all connected. I'm not words will go inch. And to have that sense of really, really Relaxed. And 
it's not just the it's not just a sense of physical relaxation I think when I wake up this very little brain activity well, to be honest I do have whole days of very little brain activity sometimes but this is a very like low level just being aware of that comfort is such a nice feeling I'm kind of getting that feeling now I'm just noticing the different parts of my body as I sit back in my big black squeaky chair and I haven't I haven't squeaked at all today because I've managed to just lay back and stay in one position But the minute I do move you, you may hear it because it's sounds very. I'm saying it sounds like a cat trying to play the violin. Very. feel the, the relaxation in my body all the way from my head as it rests against the chair the back of my neck She had to move my shoulders in order to feel them because they're just there. But I can't really feel my back. I know it's there, obviously, otherwise, or how would I be able to do this recording? And, but I can feel the lower back and feel my lower back and as soon as I focused on it it just seemed to vanish if only I could do that with the electric bill as I think and focus on my legs I can sense that they're there I suppose it's because I know that they're there The only part that I can really feel is the the backs of my lower legs as they're resting on the edge of the chair. Well, not the edge, but the yeah, the end where the chair ends. And I can feel my my slippers on my feet. I want to say slippers, not really like proper full fluffy slippers. 
more like plastic clogs crocs I think they're called crocs something like that the reason I have them is because of Andre because any you can't destroy them the way he has done the two previous pairs of slippers that I had owned before if you saw the state of those slippers Possibly a little bit surprised that Andre hasn't been arrested for what he's done to them. There'll be no chance of parole for him. say slippers it's not a euphemism I'm really talking about slippers things that you put on your feet to keep your little toes cosy or your big toes or just your human sized toes size of the toes wasn't really that important to the story and just as I mentioned in toes I start to feel the sensations in the tops of my feet apart from the part where the toes end or the toes begin rather but just the top of the foot all the way across up to where the, the leg starts that kind of bony area but also a very precious area I don't mean financially, but I guess all the parts of our body are precious. Every part of us needs to be looked after and loved. The same way that you would a I was going to say an old recipe book, maybe passed down from generation to generation, and it's not only got you know sentimental value, but there's also some really good recipes in there for making the flans. And there's an apple pie recipe that you really wouldn't want to lose because it just tastes so good. Not the recipe book, I mean the actual end result after having gone to the shops and bought the ingredients and travelled home and made the pastry and prepared the apples and cooked the apples 
and then put the apples into a baking tray tin thingy which has pastry in the bottom and then putting the pastry over the top maybe making some holes so that you know, the top of it so that it doesn't burst maybe even putting some egg on top I guess it depends on whether or not well firstly whether you have any eggs secondly whether you like eggs and thirdly whether or not that's part of the recipe because if it's not part of the recipe then maybe it wouldn't be done um, I'm not sure I suppose it depends on how important following recipes are or whether you have faith in yourself to know that you can be creative and to follow your own rules knowing that ethically and morally you're already a kind person full of love I'm really feeling like eating apple pie now apple pie and ice cream my stomach's even making noises and that's just probably because I was hungry anyway well not hungry hungry but see what I tend to do and it's not always a, the best thing is I put off cooking till I'm hungry when really to just cook the food before I get hungry and maybe time it so that it's ready just as I feel the need to consume food Do you feel quite relaxed in my head? And by that I mean there's not a lot going on inside my head right now. I'm really just focusing on talking. I've no idea what I'm going to say next. I really do. And that's, it's kind of how I like it. Apart from when I have a blank, I just can't, there's no words at all. But generally something always comes up. I just feel like my mind is just feeling really calm, really relaxed. 
there's a sense of there is a sense of well-being and I say my mind I think I mean my brain itself my eyes they're closed at the moment and they feel so much more relaxed than they did earlier and I can feel a connection between my forehead and my eyes it's as if there's some some kind of healing going on right now and the feeling I'm experiencing in my forehead maybe it is that there's some healing energy being activated or maybe I just caught the sun earlier on when I took Andre for a walk I've got quite sensitive skin always have done and it doesn't take much for me to go a bit red I can get sunburnt by opening the fridge that's not true Talking about the light that comes on in the fridge, just in case you it was me being silly. But I do catch the sun. Just being out in it for an hour or something. I don't mean laying down on the floor or in a beach a beach bed. Is it a beach bed? Deck deck chair? laying directly in the sunlight and just allowing all my muscles to melt because I do actually really like sitting or laying down in the sun it feels lovely I love the feeling until I get up and go inside because just my skin, I don't I just have a burny skin, it just burns, goes red. And some people say, Well, why don't you use you know cream, sun sunblock? It seems a bit strange to wear sunblock, or why are you sitting in the sun if you're trying to block it? But it doesn't matter what I wear. I think the only thing that I could wear that would stop the sun from getting to me would be a beekeeper's costume. That stopped the sun. But I've always been like this ever since I was a kid, a young child. And because of my age, I'm now 47. When I was about four, maybe five, in my country, in England, we had some of the hottest summers back then in the mid 70s really really proper scorchers and yeah I was getting burnt and I was a kid I didn't care but it was yeah it was pretty just, well it wasn't pretty that's the point very unpretty so I need to keep out of the sun 
but it doesn't stop me from going out in it as far as walking to the shops or walking around the town if I if I'm in town. Not something I've done for quite a while but it doesn't stop me from going out and exposing part of my body to the sun. Usually only my arms and my face. Maybe if I'm wearing a t-shirt my neck gets exposed as well. Maybe sometimes, even if it's a really nice day, I will wear my shorts. But they go down to about my knees, so my legs can be a little bit available to the sun. The only part of my body that's ever been able to just be okay with the sun and just absorb it and eventually not go brown but just goes a kind of a, a, a ready colour but just stays okay is my arms. So I can go out every day, all the way through the summer. Maybe I'll get a little bit of sunburn to start with, but generally my arms are okay. But the rest of me, my stomach's really making some strange noises. And my computer, the laptop is I think the laptop's missing me because it's really making some strange noises but I don't know I'm not sure about my relationship with a laptop at the moment I think I'm getting mixed signals <laughs> I'm really starting to think that I want to spend less time glaring into that screen and I was reading something online which was on the laptop so I suppose I was using it but it was about a thing called dark therapy the idea behind this is for people that maybe have problems with sleeping or had you know issues with that is to go to bed when it's dark you know in a sense go to bed when it's dark wake up when it's light like the way we like our ancestors used to do before electric lights and all that stuff Another thing is to maybe not use computers or not use, watch television or anything like that for maybe an hour before you go to bed. And then it went on to the blue light that comes out of mobile phones and laptops and various tablets and stuff like that. I imagine the same is with the television, but I'm not sure. You can get these glasses called blue blockers. Sounds like a pill, doesn't it? Blue blockers. And does sound, sound like some kind of antidepressant. We block the blues. And the these glasses, it's the, the lenses are supposed to stop the the blue light from you know getting to your retina. 
and you know affecting things like sleep and stuff like that. I think the Andres. I don't know what Andre's just done there. Just done away. I can tell by how long he's, he's there and by the sounds he makes. I spend way too much time with my ferret. And that is not a euphemism. I'm talking about her. A real live ferret called Andre. the lid on that thing. This generally feels quite calm. I'm feeling quite calm. speak to you next time lots of love